Hi, this is Micah. I was just um, tidying a bit and I found my old Nintendo DS and some of my old um, cartridges, including this um, handy little uh, multi-cart with a uh, SD card in it. So I was interested in video game console hacking for a long time, mostly so that I could um, kind of create homebrew games and ports and that kind of thing. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't actually finish any of these projects, mostly because I was terrible at finishing projects. I, I tended to be really into the ride rather than the uh, end result. So I had a lot of kind of partially finished um, bits and pieces and a lot of reverse engineering. And I liked um, kind of pushing the limits of what I could do with um, the pieces I had available. So one of the little relics of this I found on my system here. Um, this is an old project, Robot Odyssey DS. Um, you can actually still find the source code for this on GitHub, uh, on my GitHub. It doesn't include the, um, the binaries for the original game, but if you give it a copy of the original game, this was originally released for Apple II and DOS, um, and then there, you can find other videos on YouTube that talk about this game and, and go over what, what it's like. It's basically a, an adventure game that you solve by um, kind of wiring up these robots um, to grab items for you and take you through puzzles, and it's really cool. I, I really liked it as a kid. Um, and I started hacking at it, among other reasons, um, because it was just so bad at running on modern systems, because it was written for original 8086 DOS machines. Um, so this project resulted from a bunch of reverse engineering I did. I kind of wanted to figure out exactly what was going on inside the game, um, and that led me to uh, creating a uh, system that ben that uh, statically translated the x86 machine code back to um, kind of C++ that I could uh, then port to other platforms like Nintendo DS. So I was starting to improve the game with some additional UI and you can see here loading and saving games which originally was done on floppy disks um, and you know these little animated sprites here which are actually another instance of the game's binary running just to animate the sprite using a little kind of fork of the actual um, uh, game uh, running game data. Anyway, you know, I, I made a bunch of bits and pieces for this. Um, you can see here there's a little status screen on the bottom that shows you the robots and it's a little live view and oh, my cat's here, they do go. Um, and I had planned to have a mode where you could actually, so when you go inside the robot, oops, and we'll have to, I just picked up the robot and put it down, walk really slowly. It's actually kind of tricky to walk and to do the wiring. Um, is the, uh, so I just pressed the, uh, the L button here and that pops up a uh, toolbox. Um, and this is a little object that if I, if I walk down there, oops, there's a key you can hold just like on the DOS version. If you hold shift, uh, here you can hold um, Y and it walks slowly. You can pick up the toolbox and you can open it and inside it you can find gates. You can pick up gates and you can put them down. Um, and then just like down here you can see the A key has a little soldering iron or if I tap this now that it's highlighted and my little dude turned into a soldering iron. And if I walk really slowly my soldering iron turns red at the end of this gate. And that's the soldering noise and I could wire it up to something like this antenna. Um, we could actually make this do something if we wanted. Um, anyway, there's a uh, on-off switch um, for the robot down here. Let me turn the soldering iron back off. That's the, uh, the A key. Does that work? Oh, maybe I can't press that to turn it off. Okay, I'll press that to turn the soldering iron back off. Um, you can see when you're little, the little person you can pick up objects and move them instead of soldering them. If I took the flip-flop outside, it would break all the wires. And when I took it back in, the wires would be gone. And anyway, you can learn about all this in the game. And you can even store robots inside of other robots, which is kind of neat from like a space perspective. And this is actually one of those puzzles where if I were to just walk through it as a human or as a human carrying a robot, then that little sentry dude would pick me up and kind of drop me. So, yeah. And now if I press this remote control button, the, uh, the little um, antenna turns on and the robots turn on. And this robot isn't really doing much because its programming is messed up. But yeah, 
Let's see. Um, let's see if any of those other saved games were, were better. If we can actually start a new game, it might be a little bit more explanatory than um, starting in the middle. Oh, now Tuco is pulling at this haphazard stack of stuff that the uh, phone is sitting on top of. All right, so let's start this over. Homebrew. Robot Odyssey. Dios. All right, so... These are actually all named according to the file name that the DOS uh, game uses, I guess. I thought I'd preserve the, uh, the convention. And I don't, I didn't really implement all this menu, and I think I just had this configured for testing, so these are all just kind of random save game files. That one looks interesting. Let's see what that is. So, okay, that was a robot inside of another robot. Oh, now I'm inside this room. What just happened? Oh, okay, I walked up out of this robot and into this room. Oh, and it put me back down here. Okay, so we're in the subway. And that was a puzzle where we're getting subway tokens. So you can see the kind of adventure aspect of it. Maybe I made it walk fast by default because the adventure portion of this game is so slow when it's not walking so fast. Um, yeah, they have a bunch of they have a bunch of subway jokes. They even have a a, a subway a, a Bart station. Um, it, it's it is actually kind of a Bay Area reference. Anyway, since I don't have any good save games, let's see what's wired up in here. So I've got an AND gate. This not is turned on right now. This this kind of CGA red, this uh, magenta color indicates that the electricity would be flowing if my remote control was turned on. Uh, and the other side of the AND gate is connected to this subway token direction sensor. So this robot looks like it's either partially or fully wired up to go solve that subway token puzzle. So maybe I can demo that. Maybe that's what this save game was for ages ago when I created it for debugging purposes. Um, so if I pick this up, where was I? Oh, there it was. Okay, subway token. This game is also such a maze, it always challenged my sense of direction as a kid and as an adult. Um, oh, maybe I just completed the subway token puzzle, which would make it hard for me to demo this. Did I put the subway token in here? Oh, there it is. Well, maybe I can just demo this in an empty room then, and then I won't have to avoid that sentry. All right, so let's, where can I experiment? Uh, let's just put this here for now. slowly. It took a lot of effort to get the sound right in this game actually because the original game um, you know it implemented sound on the PC speaker and it didn't even use the really meager oscillator hardware that the PC had. It just wrote you know it had um, very carefully timed loops and assembly that would just turn the speaker IO port on and off at just the right times to make the sound effects. So um, to get that working, I actually have, so the code is statically binary translated. It isn't, um, you know, it isn't being run in an interpreter or a JIT, but um, even in the statically translated code, it introduces extra overhead when I have to care exactly how many cycles something takes. So the translator actually goes in and identifies um, what subroutines are important for sound and translates them a little bit differently, keeping track of cycles. So here's a neat feature where you might have noticed I can look out and if I, um, so if I press the, I think the button for this works, it should be able to press R and I get my little antenna, which are in my remote control, which means the robot's on. So yeah, and you can see the circuits start changing. So if I look out, you can see the robot's already moved. Uh, let's put this back up here before it gets too far away. You can pick up the robots, um, and even if they're thrusting or trying to move, they won't be able to move if you're holding them. Oh yeah, there it goes. I must have had this ROM set to run extra fast because this game normally runs maybe about half the speed or maybe a quarter the speed. But this seems like it's set up weird for debugging. But yeah, it looks like it's moving left until it hits the subway token and then stops moving left, but it's still moving down. So yeah, anyway, there is a, uh, so that's a quick tour of this kind of partially finished weird statically binary translated port of an old DOS game to the Nintendo DS. Um, I did this years ago. I don't know if I'll ever finish it. Um, it's one of those projects that 
is kind of a labor of love um, until all of a sudden it isn't and you get distracted. Um, but if anybody out there feels like picking this up, I tried to document it really well and make it easy to work on and fun to work on even. So um, if you uh, just search for Robot Odyssey DS, then you should be able to find it on GitHub. Um, and it's you know a bunch of C++ and Python code that generates a uh, Nintendo DS ROM uh, if you give it a copy of the original game. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video tour. Um, see you guys later.